Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on how no code and AI is transforming digital operations. We're living in a time where technology is evolving rapidly, and the way that we manage and optimize digital operations is being completely redefined. And so I'm thrilled to have you all here today so that I can share a recent keynote I gave on how no code platforms and AI are really at the forefront of this transformation enabling businesses to build really powerful applications, automate processes faster, more efficiently, and with less technical expertise. So today what we're going to do is dive into how the combination of no-code tools and AI is really changing how organizations operate, innovate, and scale. Throughout this session, we'll explore how you can harness these technologies to transform your own digital operations. But for those not familiar with Airtable, we are a no-code app platform used by half a million organizations globally, including 50% of the Fortune 500. So I see you know, startups leveraging Airtable to manage client relationships as they, as they get off the ground. I see nonprofits running operations on Airtable to deliver millions of meals across the globe. I see massive media and entertainment companies managing end-to-end -end product development and campaign launches on Airtable. Lots of more companies, lots of more use cases. But with that, thank you again for being here. Uh, I'm really excited to take you through this journey of digital transformation. So let's get started. I do have the hardest job in the world following, Chris, but I would love to talk a little bit about some of those applications you were mentioning that had AI in them because that is the future. I think you sort of had that 2025 to 2027, you know, that I really loved. And I'd love to just talk to you guys a little bit more about AI and how you can use it in really practical ways. Um, and so this basically just says Airtable is a large company. We serve large companies. We serve small companies. We've been around for a while and we're making a ton of impact. Um, but talking about a little bit about AI and sort of to unpack some of these cases that Chris was talking about, I don't know if maybe AI has been around, machine learning has been around for years, right? For decades. Um, how many of you guys remember maybe 10, 15 years ago when the hottest thing about AI was that you could analyze tweets? Were they positive? <laughs> Were they negative? I had an internship where this is what I build for them. Um, and you're like, wow, cool. But doesn't save me a lot of time, right? Maybe it saves you five seconds of time, five minutes of time. But now, and as Chris was mentioning, you know, in the business context, you can have all of these, you know, customer calls and just say, hey, can you read all of the transcripts of all of these customer calls and tell me, you know, where are the themes across them? Like, what are the real problems that they're trying to get at? Like, what business problems are they trying to solve? And that saves you hours and hours of time. And if you think about doing that across all of just your tasks, all of the things that you have to do, whether it's managing, you know, customers, doing internal administrative, you're, you're saving just so much time and money that you can be spending, whether it's spending time with your family or it's building out your business, it's helping people, right? And so that's really what AI is about. There's so and this really beautiful graphic that the team put together for me is basically saying that there are these AI chat products, right? There's ChatGPT where you can learn all about who Chris Dancy is that I'm going to go do after. I just, how many of you are using these like pretty consistently, whether it's ChatGPT, it's Gemini? Okay. Not everyone. I would definitely encourage you to Claude, Gemini, ChatGPT, just pick one up. They're incredibly easy to get started with and just start to ask it questions. If you haven't used it, ask it who Chris Dancy is and see and see what you're getting. Um, but it just helps you feel a bit, little bit more comfortable. It's like, what can AI even do? And that's what I started on sort of my, my AI journey. But it doesn't have a lot of context. It doesn't know who you are. It doesn't know what you're trying to do. It doesn't know who you're, you know, what your business is. And so that's what we're seeing in kind of the world is that people are either really deeply investing in AI. So uh, Jamie Dimon, who runs uh, JP Morgan, you've heard of him. Yeah, anyone have a JP Morgan account? Um, 
he is basically trying to make JP Morgan an AI company because he sees that opportunity and he's investing, you know, in hiring thousands of people to create their own AI bedrock, which you guys probably can't do that right within your own businesses. Uh, And so what Airtable can do for you is really just be that platform to harness those AI solutions and do things like create a, you know, create a resume writer or have all of your customer calls go through and say, hey, give me a summary, you know, flag when the tone is really bad, we might actually lose this customer. You don't have to learn all of these different tools. Airtable is really about being that center of technology so that you can come in and say, I have to solve a problem. Let me use Airtable to do it instead of having to learn all of these different tools in kind of the in kind of the- and so I wanted to actually talk about not just in the abstract, but how can you really apply AI to your no code apps? And what that really means, I'd like to turn that around and say, here are a few ways to just get you started, get you comfortable with AI so that you can find opportunities to save time. To, do, to just outsource those things that you really hate doing. It's basically just a version of automations on steroids. So how many of you guys are like using automations today? A lot. Oh my gosh. Pretty much everyone. My people, as Chris says. Um, just think about AI as like a really boosted up version of automations where you can kind of just talk to it like a human and just say, okay, here's my problem. You know, I... Uh, well, let's actually go through it. Here's my problem. That's sort of step one. I'll talk about some tactical examples, but if you're like, there's so many applications of AI, I don't know where to start. It's so overwhelming. And you kind of just put it in a box and you're like, I'll deal with AI at some point, which is what I did for a little bit. Um, just know about like, what are you trying to do? What do you do when you're solving a customer problem? Um, where you're solving a business problem, where you're solving your own problem, you know, so maybe we're building we're building that app to build resumes. I really like that one because I talk with young people so much that are just so like scared and nervous. And you're like, oh, I don't think I have the right skills or I don't know how to position myself. And I'm always reviewing resumes for them, right? And so if we say, I would love to continue to help those people, maybe even scale the number of people that I can help. Let me just write out like, what do I actually do? You know, it's like, okay, I, maybe this, so- is, this is more for product specifically, but Let's just sort of do it live. Let's say that I, I'm connecting with these people. I am understanding who they are, what their background is, maybe what they're really stellar at, what they want to do, what their goals are, you know, in five years. And so I get, you know, step one is maybe we can say that's centralizing inputs. We're really understanding that person. And you're saying, okay, well, let's look at what's out there. And what are you trying to go for? What's that company you're looking at? Are you applying to Airtable? Are you applying to Google? Are you trying to you know, start a company and you want to pitch to investors. Maybe it's not just about resume writing. And so you really understand that and say, okay, what are some of the the connector points, the best case strategies? And you're writing out all the things that you would just be doing if you did it manually. Then you look at all of those steps and say, where do you already have automations? Because this group, you already have automations. And so that you'll be like an easier way for you to just, you know, take a look at this. And say, okay, what if I could automate this more? What if I could use AI? What, or even just don't say that. Say, what is a problem or what is a step that takes me a really long time to do? And let me just spend a little bit of time tweaking to see if I can actually set up some automation or get some help from AI to improve that step. And so just do it one thing. So maybe it's pulling all of the best practices for different industries to provide advice you know, to those people. And then so- embed that AI within your first party and data in workflows. And so I am at a Daretable conference. And so normally, I'd, you know, depending on the conference, I'm not really pitching Airtable too hard. So I don't think I have to pitch Airtable too hard to this group. But whatever other tools you use as well, there's so- they there's need so- to have AI in them. Otherwise, they're going to be left behind. You're going to be left behind. You're going to be doing things slower. You're going to be on the back foot. And people are going to run by you if you're not thinking about how to get help from AI. And the really important thing I mentioned is, you know, you're, you're using ChatGPT constantly. It doesn't have context on who you are, what your business is doing, what you're trying to do. And so you have to almost give it that context every single time. Let's take an example. Let's say you're trying to write an email to a prospect. 
or you know to someone and you're trying to get their attention and so you spend maybe 45 minutes writing emails i write emails very meticulously maybe you spend 15 minutes doing it um you could ask ai write me an email to reach out to a customer prospect and you look at it and you go oh this isn't me this isn't really going to grab them but it doesn't know your tone it's like i want to upload kelly's tone into this and have it write it and so that's basically what I mean, when I say embed AI within that first party data, what I can actually do is let's say, store all of my emails on Airtable, store all of your blog posts on Airtable, uh, you know, store all of maybe the, the, these conferences, you know, that I do as a personal use case, store them on Airtable. And then what you can say is, okay, Airtable, I am writing up a new blog post. And it's going to be for the New York City audience of, you know, users who are really advanced and know what they're doing. Can you pull, using my old articles that you you have and you know in Airtable, can you actually just write up that post for me? Sort of, you know, considering like local, you know, whether it's mannerisms, local references, and it'll do it. And so just getting all that data in one place to run AI is really, really important. And then... The last thing, just like what Chris was saying about, you don't just launch an app and you're like, okay, later guys, this is incredible. I have built the best thing in the world on the first try. We all do that, right? We build the best thing in the world. We don't talk to anyone and we just build it and we say, thank you so much. We get a standing applause and we leave. It's not how the world works. So just like you guys are building your businesses, you're building products, you're writing up an email draft, you're creating a board deck. You're writing a, you know, a presentation to get up here on stage. You have a draft. You change the draft. You test it out. You, know, you get user feedback. You launch a beta. You change things some more. And so that's just how technology works. And so whatever these solutions are, you know, whether you're building a resume writer, um, you know, another use case internally that I really love is that we, during COVID, we helped um, the World Central Kitchen serve 30 million meals to communities in need where they couldn't get, you know, food or they're elderly and they couldn't leave their home. And we ordered everything all through Airtable. And I think that's incredible impact, but it's like, they were really listening to those people, what's working, what's not working. And they could iterate on that. You don't just, so I think I'm ending way too early. And so I can just monologue for the next 17 minutes, but I'd also, I don't know if it's allowed. I'd love to maybe hear from the audience, but I really encourage you guys. I think AI, actually, let me ask you guys, does anyone a little hesitant to use AI or integrate AI? Well, only one person. I don't believe it. You know, I don't, yeah, it's, it's a safe space. It's a safe space. It's a safe space. And that's why I'd really encourage you guys to just pull up ChatGPT, or if you don't like open AI, you can use Anthropic. You can use Gemini, even just Google, right? Like even for those people who are hesitant to use AI, if you guys noticed, you Google something now, it gives you that nice little snippet at top. And I'm like, thank you. That's so much better. And the, so you are probably using AI, even if you don't know it. Just get in that habit of asking it some questions. Um, so who is Chris Dancy? I'm going to question all of you people who raised your hand and say, get that app open and start to, and start to do it. Embed that AI and really test and iterate with it. But basically what CoBuilder does, and I had it on the last slide, um, this is the, our first, again, this is just our first take, but there's a really long roadmap of where we're investing on builder tools within this. And um, you basically can just kind of type in, like, this is this was back when uh, the Nike was launching, I mean, a shoe company was launching uh, a shoe in time for the Olympics. And so it helped me launch a women's skateboarding shoe in time for the Olympics. And it would create this, it would create this crazy app where it would just be like, okay, well, here are your tables. It makes links, it makes link connections for it. It posts just some dummy data. You guys are a bit more advanced, I would say, than this. And so what we're doing after you create the app, we want CoBuilder to just be with you and say, okay, hey, can you create me a dashboard? I want some roll-up fields. I want this to be linked to this. I want these single to add these single select fields um, just so that you can kind of talk to it and just do it a lot, do these common patterns way more quickly. And then the other aspect of it is being able to kind of tie in like, hey, I want to do, basically just say, I want to do this. I want to, you know, send emails out and we'll create like the AI and the automations for you. So you're just saving a ton of time. 
So that's sort of like the, the direction of the roadmap we're going in. But Brandy is going to talk all about it later. <laughs> and I think that I am kicked off stage. So thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, how can we ensure data remains secure? It's incredibly top of mind for our largest enterprise customers. It's top of mind for us, you know, with our vendors. And we have taken several measures to ensure the security of your data when using Airtable AI. So rest assured that no customer data is retained by our vendors or used to train current or future large language models or LLMs. Additionally, enterprise customers can choose from different LLMs for Airtable AI. So Airtable is LLM agnostic, so you can choose OpenAI's GPT models or Anthropic's Claude mo models, excuse me, via Amazon Bedrock, which is a service where models are hosted on the AWS environment and do not leave that environment. Thank you guys all so much for going through that session with me, and I hope that you learn something to really take out of it and apply in your day-to-day -day lives that's really tactical and can help. Wonderful.